Was it hard to wait until marriage? Still mad at five minute crafts? You guys, you want to pick up five. Why is Dennis not ready to have kids? He would never make out with me in public and I'm just like, come on, I just want to make out. Worst fan experience. I don't like the word fan. Was he stalking me? Do I regret posting my breast explant? Hi guys, and welcome to a very different video on my channel. Q&A, chatty, get ready with me video. I'm very excited for this video. Have a little hot tea. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know that this past week has been really, really hard for me. I feel like isolation got to me. Dennis's grandma passed away, really affected me, and I got behind. I really pride myself on posting twice a week here on this channel. I mean, for me, it's not so much about posting, more about really being able to connect with you all, and so I was like, oh my God, I don't have anything to post this week, and it's Monday. Usually a video takes me or anywhere from like, a week to a little bit more to produce and such. I know, kind of crazy. And so I was like, okay, maybe a Q&A. Sometimes I feel like I'm too rigid with myself creatively. Like I'm too structured. And I think to be quite honest, I like videos like this every once in a while. Like I like being able to just sit with you and talk to you and update you about my life and have you guys ask me questions and just feel like a nice genuine connection, if that makes sense. I hope you guys don't mind this video. I promise you on Saturday, there'll be a completely normal Natalie Zotlin video. I know this is very strange for this channel, but I also just did a huge purchase of teas tonight and I'm so excited. I will spend my money on teas and books, not on clothes, not on cars, not on house, not on anything. But feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you are into these kinds of videos. Also leave me a comment down below in case you have any questions that I may not have answered in this video. Maybe I could do this every month, every two months, maybe never. Okay, you tell me, I don't know. So I'm gonna be doing my makeup. All the products will be linked down below. I have all the questions laid out. I actually broke up this video into categories because a lot of you had very overlapping questions. I don't even know where to start. Life update, in case you don't follow me on my vlog. I am currently in Los Angeles, Los Angeles, California. Dennis and I have officially decided to move back to Orlando. We've been following on the vlog channel. You kind of understand, we miss our family. And this whole quarantine thing just made us realize we really love our family more than we thought. We just want to be near them. We are moving in August, which is very exciting. Probably be buying a new house to start like a new beginning. Obviously selling our old house. We never sold it in the first place just because we weren't sure if we were going to like LA. And we're going to go back. We still have our house, which is nice. I have been vlogging a lot on the second channel. Channel. I love connecting with you guys. If you like videos like this, you can see a lot more over on the vlog because I do a lot of Q&A, like chatty things, showing you my day. I've also been experimenting a lot with the different things on my channel, if you will. I've been trying out like these little PDFs and I think you guys would really enjoy them. Kind of like self-care, relaxing, to get more clear with your life, your purpose, if you will. I've been experimenting with that. A big goal for me is to start another business and I want that business to be very intentional and I want it to be something that can help people. I think I'm kind of gravitating towards the route of worksheets or books or I'm not really sure. You see what I'm saying? I just moisturize my face. Mm. You guys asked me a lot of questions about Dennis. Okay, here we go. In case you guys don't know, Dennis is my husband. I've been married with him for two years. A lot of you asked how long we have been together. All together, nine freaking years. That's crazy. I really did find my soulmate. I think my longest relationship before Dennis was just six months, and that was quite long. So how did we meet? We actually met at three consecutive weddings. Was he stalking me? No. When I was with the guy that I lasted six months with, I had seen Dennis at the first wedding and I thought he was so attractive. Legit with my ex-boyfriend at the time looking over. I was so attracted to Dennis. Something about him that was so like captivating to me. Maybe I knew he was gonna be my future husband. I don't know, honey. But God had plans for me. Okay, this foundation does not match me. Do not judge. Magic happens after. Oh, I never realized how difficult it actually is to do a Q&A and do your makeup. So a lot of you wanted to know, why is Dennis not ready to have kids? If you follow us on our vlog channel, Dennis is always saying, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, and homegirl. I'm honestly not ready to. I don't think you're ever ready for kids. Honestly, for us, God's timing. I would say in the next two years, if you really want to be specific. I really want to have kids before I'm 30. I just don't want to have any complications, and I feel like it does get harder to have kids. I look so and pale. It will make more sense after, I hope. Next question. Was it hard to wait until marriage? I actually wrote this out because I get very nervous. I'm just gonna read what I wrote. I'm gonna be honest. Waiting until marriage is very difficult, especially being with Dennis for seven years. I would like to make a whole video on why I think waiting for marriage makes the relationship easier. I'm not saying I did. I'm not saying I did it. It was very difficult for us and we both have completely different views on this. 
so uncomfortable talking about this. I did not have God in my life during that time. I made a lot of mistakes. I also feel like it made my relationships more difficult. If you were to ask me what is the secret formula for having a successful relationship, I would say, I'm gonna sound antiquated, but I would say waiting until marriage and not living with your significant other until marriage, unless you're absolutely very, very mature. The reason I say that is because things just get so complicated. Honestly, if you just wanna see a whole video on that, I will open up about it. I don't wanna do it in this one, it's just too much. Somebody asked, does Dennis treat you better off camera than on camera? I actually thought this was a funny question. I think it's very difficult for him to show emotion on camera. He's actually sweeter off camera. He gives me lots of kisses and hugs and I open this. He's a very affectionate person. He doesn't like like PDA or anything like that. He would never make out with me in public. And I'm just like, come on, I just wanna make out. Do you prefer a five-year-old dentist or a five of dentists? Ooh. My lock screen right now is Dennis as a baby. He's so freaking cute. Can he just give me a baby already? I think he's adorable. Be cute to hang out with the little Dennis, but five of Dennis. No, just kidding. Moving on. Oh my God, I'm looking busted. Just apologize for what this is gonna look like. So I actually got a lot of faith related questions. Recently, I've been opening up more about my faith. I've actually been just gravitating more towards God recently in these times. And I've just been more interested. I feel like God's really opening up my heart to him. I've never really touched much on faith and like this with me. Recently, I just wanna be more authentic to myself. Like this is the person I am. I ain't gonna hide it, whether you like it or not. I'm feeling really good about God recently. I think I've been establishing a more mature relationship with him. Did you grow up in a religious home? So my mom was actually Catholic and my dad was Christian. You would think that that would make things nice and easy, but no. It was always like a feud. Go to my church, go to my church. They were always like pushing and butting heads. I would say my dad was more religious, so I gravitated a little bit more towards that. Right now, I'm not really defining myself into like a religion, I'm more so just building a relationship with God. I wanna build a connection. I wanna expand that. So that's my focus. How did you start with Bible stuff? Do you have any resources? Bible for me has honestly been a huge struggle. It's hard to pick it up. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Janine Amapola. She is amazing. She's been doing these daily, weekly Bible challenges on her Instagram live and I have never been so gravitated towards someone just like speaking about God's word. I don't know what it is. She really speaks to me. My biggest tip would be build like a community of people. While I don't have one right now, I definitely feel like I have one through her. I recommend you guys to check it out. It's nice because she's not like a pastor so I feel like she's very knowledgeable but she doesn't make it feel like you're not equal to her. It resonates a lot more with me. Do you read the Bible every day? I'm actually trying to incorporate it into like my morning ritual. I try to wake up earlier which I actually have. That's been the first thing that I I do and then also the last thing that I do at night like this nice balanced ritual where I am reading the Bible every single day another great resource this one book it's called the Bible study and it kind of just takes you through the Bible the Old Testament and the New Testament I'm learning guys it pretty much just ask you questions as you're reading so it makes it a little bit more dynamic and fun am I doing a good job is this okay I don't even know let's do it girlfriend <laughs> I also got a lot of questions about Jupiter. If you don't know, Jupiter is my four-year-old golden retriever. He's actually, his birthday is this Friday. I'm so excited, yeah. How did Jupiter recover after his horrible haircut? So if you don't know, I decided I was gonna cut his hair. One night, really bored at night, and my God, that poor boy looks terrible. I've been going to sleep looking, feeling ugly. Jupiter's been depressed, okay? Like, how do you tell your dog that this is happening and that you can't take him out to be with all his doggy friends? So he just looks up at me and he's like, why are you not taking me out? It's been tough, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, Jupiter's turning four. Always wanted to throw him a party. People convince me, why, why spend your money on that? All I will say is once I get to Florida, I'm gonna have a little doggy party. If you have dogs, Come on over. It's like one of my dreams. I just want him to have a party, damn it. What's so bad about that? You know what I mean? Why aren't you getting a new dog or a puppy friend for Jupiter? So obviously because we moved here, we just decided so close to getting another dog, you guys. We were so freaking close. It was sad to say no, but I know it was also the right thing. Imagine us flying across the country with two dogs. No, honey. Jupiter, he's a sweet boy and he's a good boy, but he's a handful. He gets hair all over the plane and it's just very embarrassing. <laughs> Best way to build confidence. I would say the best way is to be around confident women. Surround yourself with really confident women. If you don't have that in your life, read books, listen to podcasts. Look up to women that aspire to be better in life. You're always just following self-deprecating people. And I don't know, just talking about negative stuff all the time. A part of you will omit that into your subconscious. I truly believe that. I love to follow women like Oprah Winfrey, Nina Rodriguez, Adrienne Bailone, all the ladies from The Real. There's a lot of really wonderful Marie Forleo. She bombed. Who or what was your main inspiration growing up? Lizzie McGuire. It's Hilary Duff. I freaking was obsessed with her. Her and Jess McCartney. I didn't really look up to Jess McCartney. I was just obsessed with his looks and his voice, his beautiful self. I feel like now it's definitely shifted towards more, like a lot of like really strong women. Like I mentioned, like Oprah Winfrey, Michelle Obama. <laughs> 
But a lot of you wanted to know, did I go to school? What was my major? So yes, I did go to school. I did not graduate. I do think school and education is very important. I genuinely believe it. YouTube just really picked off for me and I became really busy. I was my last semester. I was studying marketing and business. It was my forte. I just feel like I was really applying it more on YouTube. I was already doing a lot of behind the scenes negotiations and talking to brands, like building my own team and delegating and like pretty much everything that you learn in business. And I took a leap of faith, even though I did tell my parents, Can I please take a semester off, do YouTube. And they were like, absolutely not. And I was like, what? Really hard to convince them, but I worked my booty off. Asked them, I said, okay, let's do something. Let's negotiate here. Can I please leave school and pursue YouTube if by the end of the semester, I reach a million subscribers? And they were like, okay. I literally had barely scratching 7,000 subscribers. And I'm telling you guys, I worked my ass off. Like I really, really worked so hard to make it happen. And uh, if you followed my podcast, which is no longer out anymore, you guys, I know it's kind of sad. It's not a project that I really wanted to pursue. I really talked a lot about everything. I think there are still some YouTube channels that have some of that, some of that advice behind the scenes. I've also made separate videos. So if you're interested in that, I will link them down below. I go really in depth on like the business, creating a team, just like what it takes. A lot harder than it looks, people. What did I do before YouTube? Yeah, that's what I did. I was a student. I also worked at my community college it was a great experience. I only had that job. And that's something that I actually wish I had had more of, more jobly experience. And the reason I say that is because now that I am someone that I manage people and I hire people, I don't have a lot of skill. Like, I wish I would have known what it's like to have a relationship between your boss, multiple bosses. It's good to know that stuff. You know how they say eyebrows are supposed to look like sisters, not like twins? Mine don't even look like they're related right now. Okay, moving on. Can I do eyeliner and answer a question? How do you manage your personal life on top of social media? Something that I learned that I really had to learn. It was a really rough lesson for me. My identity cannot be tied with what I do. If you tie your identity, your being, who you are as a person, with your accomplishments, with the things that you do, once all of that is gone, you gone. So you cannot do that. I actually learned this from Oprah Winfrey. She was about to start her show. She was asked, okay, Oprah, what if it doesn't do well? If it doesn't do well, I will still do well because I am not defined by a show. I believe that I am defined by the way that I treat myself and the way that I treat other people. Love that. And I think for anyone that is, Guys, we are looking asymmetrical. I get a lot of questions asking me, Natalie, how do I find my passion? I'm lost. I don't know what to do. I've been there, done that. I would switch my career so many different times not knowing what I wanted to do. My best tip for you, don't focus your energy into what you want to do. Focus your energy into who you want to become. That changes everything. How long have you been on YouTube? I've been on YouTube since August of 2014. It means this coming August will be officially six years, you guys. That's wild. Obviously I've grown, like it's been six freaking years. I'm just now coming out into myself, coming out into who I really am. When you start a channel and something starts to work well, you kind of play a character. You become a cartoon. That, that kind of happened for me. And then I realized I'm not the same person I was last month. I'm not the same person I was a year ago. People still think that I'm this way. But I think it's very important to evolve your channel, to switch it up, to keep your audience and your friends involved into all the changes in your life. And that's something that I haven't done well because I think for the longest time I've seen it too much as a business, which granted it is. It's also my creative outlet. Like that's how I started. And I think you should never change the reason why you started. It's not really been about making money. I went through an identity crisis when I started to see it that way. It's just my creative outlet. It's a way for me to connect with people all around the world to make you guys happy, to make myself happy. Natalie's outlet, your outlet, everyone's outlet. That's why there's no apostrophe in <laughs> Natalie's. <laughs> Every time I say that, then it's like, shut up. But did you know that? No apostrophe in Natalie because apostrophe stands for ownership and ownership means that I wanted this to be everybody's creative outlet. It's cheesy, but it's right, baby. That's the heart of this channel from the beginning. Worst fan experience. I don't like the word fan because that to me is like you're idolizing someone you're glorifying someone which you should not be glorifying anyone but god my worst experience has been when i get treated like a statue like people just come up to you and they just take a picture with you they don't even say hi they don't even ask for a picture they just go Cool. And then they just bounce. Then they share with all their friends. Oh my God, I just spent now all like Granted, my audience is not so much like that, but I have been to like events like VidCon, different things where people just like, don't even know who they're going up to. They just see people taking pictures with someone and then they're like, oh my God, wait, I need a picture too. That's not cool. Like I'm a human being. Like, talk to me, greet me, ask me for a picture. What I will say is I've been very proud of the audience that I've built, very respectful. Every single time that I meet them, I don't get mobbed. And at first I was a little bit like, I kind of wish I was a creator like Tana Mojo that gets mobbed. That's not 
not really who I am. It's not the kind of attention that I want. I guess what I'm saying is you guys are all so respectful. You all literally line up. And I just think your audience kind of reflects who you are. Like granted, not everything, but a little glimpse into the kind of person that you are and the things that you've put out. also been getting a lot of questions on how I've been doing during isolation and what I've been doing to pass the time away. I stay motivated to work out and stay healthy. You need someone to keep you accountable. For me, it's Dennis. If I'm sitting on the couch too long, he's like, where's your workout? And I don't think you necessarily need someone in person. Like you could have a FaceTime workout buddy. And that's someone that can keep you accountable. Very important during these times. The first day of quarantine, oh my God, Dennis went out and we just went ham with snacks. Let's get everything. First day, maybe the first three hours, of I ate the whole Oreo whole package. When I looked at the calories, I was like, I am never gonna burn this off. I've been warned, Oreos are dangerous and delicious. Favorite new hobby. I've been drawing on my iPad, I have a lot of drawing. I've also been learning a new language. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you would not know I'm currently learning Japanese Nihongo. Hajimemashite, yoroishiku onegaishimasu. Watashi no namae wa natari desu. It's been super fun. Me and my editor, I'm trying to be my editor. He cannot speak Japanese before me, you hear me, Alejandro? It's been so fun. I've just been gravitating more towards God and finding like little groups of people online, like little communities. I have to stay busy. I've been creating worksheets for ya. <sighs> Amazing. It's also kind of weird. Look at this. Bam. I really want to do an eating food ASMR like chatty video. Let me know if you guys are into that. We might do it. How are you coping? I am staying busy. Staying grateful. Very important to be grateful. I also feel like I have a really good group of friends. I'm such a loner. I don't have any friends. And then I have all these people texting me and I, it just like opens my eyes. I have so many people in my life to talk to, vent to. I think it's very important to talk it out. I know it's hard. Trust me. It puts you in a vulnerable state, but it's good to let it out. It's very important for the soul, for the spirit, for the mind. Have my eyes look sharp. Another thing I've been trying to learn is to be quiet, to silence my mind. It's not an easy thing to do, but I think it's important. I'm trying to learn to be more still. I think those are the moments that you really self-reflect on your life. Make some big decisions. When I got quiet with myself, that's when I realized, y'all, I don't want to be here in LA all by myself. I want to be with my family. I want to grow a family. I want to have those roots there. My parents were never able to be with their parents because they immigrated. Why should I take that opportunity away from myself? For what? For success, for money, for glorification here. I'm just like, I'm done. I just want to live a nice humble life when I first started YouTube and I think that's like the problem Instagram and YouTube and stuff there's too much glorification for things and material it doesn't make you happy trust me I've been there in a position where I've almost had it all and I have been miserable in those moments it's not also to say like you have to become a minimalist to be happy or anything like that that's another way of seeing life I just think that family is so important I never really realized it until all of this happened like it legit took freaking pandemic to make me realize that and I'm just like this has been the biggest lesson of my life. I appreciate every single day, every waking moment, everyone that you have around you. Tell them how you feel. Be honest with people, but do it in a way that's kind. Genuinely tell people you appreciate them. So that's what we have going on right now. My eyebrows have not been done in ages. We're working. I love the skin, just glowy, nice, dewy. I'm a no lash kind of girl now. I just, I prefer it. Now we got some random questions. What's your home lock screen? Well, I already showed you guys, it's Dennis. It's always baby pictures of Dennis. He's just so cute. I like to see him. But one of my friends, the Gregory brothers, they actually gave me this tip for my couples. Whenever you're pissed off at your significant other, you have been there, don't laugh, okay? If you have a picture of them next to your bed stand, next to your desk, of them as a baby, you will look at that and you will say, do I want to be screaming at that little baby? Because that's this person. And that changed everything. Could you not? When I'm pissed off at Dennis, I look at that and I'm like, cute. There's a little boy in him still, and so I need to be kind. And I need to be kind to that little girl inside me because I don't want to be raging, I'm bat, a mean person. Like, that's not who I am. I'm feeling philosophical today. I've also really enjoyed putting blush on my nose because I want to look kawaii. 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 Cute. Japanese. Do I regret posting my breast explant? No. It has been the most important video that I have ever done in my whole YouTube channel. I've also gotten questions on how am I one year after my explant? I could not be better. It's truly changed my life. Never putting anything inside of me. I 
I'm never putting anything inside of me. I have always been like a natural girl. Like I don't really like to do a lot to myself. Literally, I got breast implants, hello. And I definitely think like when you open up the window into a little bit of something, a little filler, a little bit of nip and tuck, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I just want to age gracefully. I look at my grandma and I'm like, you are so beautiful. I appreciate all the wrinkles, all the little flabby dabbies. Like it's cute, it's nice. I don't want to be a 90 year old woman looking like I've had no life experience, no wisdom, no nothing. I think nowadays I look at myself and I'm like, oh honey, I don't remember seeing that there. I don't remember seeing that there. Genuinely already starting to see things in myself and I'm trying to love myself through the process of aging. It's a beautiful thing. Not a lot of people get a lot of years of life. So that's how I want to start seeing it. I have a life coach. She is amazing. Oh my God. It's changed my life to talk to someone. But I just noticed I'm someone that goes off on tangents. Like I feel bad for my friends. Like that's that's what happens in my mind. Like here and then I'm and then I'm here. I need to be still with myself. Still mad at five minute crafts? You guys, you want to pick up five. No, I'm not mad at them. I will send them lots of love, value them as creators. I'll also send them an invoice. I'm kidding. Are you still playing Animal Crossing? My Switch is right over there. It's a Genesis Switch. I don't really own a Switch. I'm not, and it makes me a little bit sad. It was fun, but then I just thought, I'm putting a lot of effort into this life. What about my real life? Like, I actually have a problem. I talk about this all the time with my life coach. I can't take a break. It's a problem. It's an actual problem. I say this with a smile on my face, but I know. I struggle with that. So it's actually, it's a really great game. Have you ever considered doing a live stream? Yes. I actually wanted your little your little input. Okay. For the longest time, I've been wanting to do live stream, IG live, because I want to connect with you. I want to get to know you more. You know, I want you guys to see me without all the editing. Instagram seems a little glitchy, so I was looking into Twitch. Uh, however, I don't think a lot of you are on Twitch, but I think if I ever do live, I'll definitely be on Twitch. Number one, no lag. Number two, you can monetize. You know, like why not? Like I'm just being honest. Like that, that's number three. I just think it's a it's a really cool platform. I'd like to check it out. So I'm below. If you checked out Twitch, if you know what Twitch is, watch me on Twitch. Tips for learning a new language, specifically Japanese. These are my tips. Boom, boom. Number one, it has to be fun. If you're forcing yourself to do it, you ain't gonna learn it. It's not supposed to be like that. How do you do that? Making sure that maybe you could set like a nice little schedule for yourself. Isn't too rigorous, but it's also attainable. You're challenging yourself. With Japanese, you need to start with hiragana and katakana. It's like, I will say that's like their alphabet, if you will. They each have 46 different characters. 32 or 46 different characters that you have to learn. And I will leave a really amazing, a really amazing resource down below that will help you in that. So it's called the Fugu. I freaking love freckles. They are the bomb.com. How do you stay motivated? Number one, you need goals. You need a vision. You need to know where you're going. How can you like do that? The very first thing is to write it down. If you're interested in like a little PDF to help you do that, I will link the ones that I've created down below for you. There's so many different ones. Write it down and then put it somewhere where you could see it. Same with Japanese. Freaking Japanese is everywhere. I want to be learning this stuff. I want to be learning Kido, Kido, Murasaki. I want to be learning colors. I want to be learning what it, what it means to do things. No me months. God damn it, I love freckles. Literally, for anyone that ever had freckles and removed them, I'm so sorry. You see how things just go in and come out? Thin little brows were a thing, now it's thick brows. Big titties were a thing, now it's little titties. Just kidding. You make it a thing, you know? This has been really fun. I don't know if you've been having fun or if you exited this video. I have been having a ball and I just wanted to show you. To end this video, I'm just going to show you how I've been doing my hair recently. And I just wanted to thank you for being here with me, spending some time with me. This has been freaking awesome. I bought this on Amazon. $7. Seven. <laughs> okay. And it's so, it's just, it's small. Like it, it doesn't have a lot of hair. So I feel like it looks a little bit more natural. I've really, really been loving it because I don't want to commit to bangs. Every once in a while, I want to feel different. I freaking love these. Look at that. Look at that, honey. And then I've been adding a little bow. I like to look Hawaii. Cute, you know? If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you'd like to see these. Every once in a while, they're so easy to film. They're really fun to film. Give it a like if you enjoyed. I will link below other Q and A's that I've done in the past, just in case you're interested. I will also link my vlog channel because if you ever want just more videos like this, this is the vlog. This is what you get on the vlog channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you a part of the family. Turn on that little bell so that YouTube can notify you of new videos. If you ever miss me, you can find me on my IG. I post a lot of really inspirational, positive, shedding some love, shedding, shedding some love and light over there. Or you could just tuck it in. I'm just gonna leave it like that. That looks pretty cute. Forward, just like that. Bam.
Yay. Okay, that looks a little weird actually today. But anyways, I love you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. You are the bomb.com. I hope you're doing well. Let's check in with each other. Let me know how you're doing in the comments. I would love to just be here for you and I will see you guys in the next video. Something today's not right. Is it? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go fix this. Bye guys.